Now there is an interesting RISC V microcontroller chip that is starting to see some use, particularly on very uh, low end boards. And that's a chip from a company called WCH, who are a chip designer in China. They make a whole bunch of chips, including some microcontroller chips. And this particular one is based on RISC V, a 32 bit RISC V, and it's called the, get this right, the CH32V203. Okay, and you can get it on some different boards, uh, either kind of generic ones, but I did manage to find one from Adafruit, so that's a well-established company that could give you all the instructions on how to set it up and use it, and you can get hold of them. Didn't cost very much, uh, one or two dollars, very, very cheap boards. And so uh, what I wanted to do was to test it to see what it was like in terms of its performance and in terms of its power usage. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Now, at the very end of the video, I'm going to tell you a bit about the ecosystem because the problem with these kind of outlier chips is that you don't know what kind of support you're going to get from the manufacturer, from the board maker, or in the ecosystem. So we'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. But first, let's dive in to all the different performance and power usage uh, numbers. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. So I'm trying to test this RISC-V CH32 chip. Uh, this is about one of the very few boards you can get for it. It's from Adafruit. Uh, and of course, testing a chip uh, is fine, but you need to have something to test it against. So I'm using a Raspberry Pi Pico 1 and Pico 2 board. And the Pico 2, of course, has got the ARM Cortex M33 processor in it, dual core. It's also got two RISC-V cores. I've got a whole separate video just comparing the performance and the power usage of the different cores inside of the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. So I won't be using the RISC-V cores inside of that chip today. And I've also got the latest uh, Arduino Nano R4, which I just did a video about, and that's got the Cortex uh, M4 core in it. So four different boards in total, uh, four different architectures, uh, three of them ARM, one of them this RISC-V CH32 chip. Let's see how it goes. So to do the testing, we're gonna be using Arduino. Uh, about the only system you can use to program the CH32 board is Arduino. Doesn't support much else. So I'm gonna use Arduino for everything, even though of course underneath there are different tool chains, different compilers, RISC-V compilers versus ARM compilers. Uh, third-party compilers versus the standard ones because we're using the official Arduino R4 board there. But it's all Arduino using the same code. That's basically the idea. So as close as I can get it. So how am I doing the testing? Well, I run two different benchmarks. The first one is the N-Queens problem, which is a classic puzzle in computer science and maths. The idea is to place N number of queens on an N by N a chess board that no two queens attack each other. There are multiple solutions and you want to find all the solutions. For this test, I use a 15 by 15 chess board and see how long the microcontroller takes to work out all those combinations. I also calculate and verify the SHA256 hash of a string 10,000 times, because if you do it just once, it happens very quickly, 10,000 times. The SHA2 is calculated with software only, so there's no hardware accelerations. For example, the Pico boards do have acceleration in there, and that would be an advantage uh, if you were actually doing this in the real world. But I'm doing it just with software, just to try to show the speed of, and power usage of the boards. And the result is checked every time against a hard-coded a result. So not only are we doing the calculation, we're also checking it. So this one is a bit more memory intensive compared to just the end queen, which is probably much more CPU intensive. Okay, so here's our first result. So I'm showing you the four different boards and how long it took to find all of the solutions for a 15 by 15 board, the lower the better. So we can see that the best results come from the RISC-V CH32 board and the Pico 2 board. And we can see next is the original Pico board and then the uh, Arduino board. But this is where it starts to get complicated. This is running at 144 megahertz. This is running at 200 megahertz. This is running at just 48 megahertz. So a quarter 
of the clock speed of this one, for example. And this one's running at 150 megahertz. So these two, the Pico 2 and the Risk 5 board, are running at roughly the same clock frequency, but these other two aren't. Now what we can do is we can do a bit of maths and we can level all that out to reimagine it, what would be the result if they were all running at just 48 megahertz. Now many of these boards, you can set the clock speed uh, as a software configuration when you compile the binary. It's one of the options you can set uh, in the Arduino there. So what do we get? Well, this is what it looks like if everything was running at 48 megahertz we can see that again lower is better that the pico although it's running at 200 megahertz normally and it was doing quite well actually that's the slowest uh, when it comes down to it now of course that's got the m0 plus board in it which is the the smallest arm core really that you can get especially compared to an m4 and m33 which are much more beefier much more performant cores so again we can see that the risk 5 uh, chip and the M33 in the Pico 2 are roughly the same. I think this one comes out just slightly ahead. But again, that's not the full story. How much power does it use when you're running uh, all that? So this is back to their native speeds. So you can see here that the Pico runs a much higher number of uh, milliamps on average as it's going through that calculation not before not after and lower here now there are other things to take into account here some of these boards have got power leds on them for example the arduino n uh, nano r4 has got a power led you might be able to drop this down by a few milliwatts if you took the you know the led off and things like that but we can see that this is pretty impressive actually that that uh, is very low power usage on that board it's also a fairly bare board but it's got low power usage now of course the other question is though is that it this may have that low this may have it high but what happens if this or or this more specifically does it in twice as quick you know, so you might use less power, but it's like the hair of a tortoise. If you use less power, but it takes you an hour to work something out. But what happens if you use more power, but you do it in 20 minutes or a minute and 20 seconds, whatever the, the your time is. So it's not only about the average while you're doing it, because this might be low, but if it takes much, much longer. So the next slide I've given you here is the total energy used to complete the task. That means how much energy do I need to actually give me all the combinations for that end queen solution. And as we can see here, this Risk v chip does very, very well. In fact, slightly better than the Pico 2 board. The Pico, original Pico does very well. So uh, it's running faster, but it's not using that much power. But the Arduino R4 board uh, uses a lot of power. Now that board is quite a complicated board. It's got things like uh, points on it for battery backup for the real time clock and all this kind of stuff. So it's much more uh, feature rich board and as it's even got power LED on it. So maybe it's more to do with the board that we can't get into right now. But overall, the total energy to complete the task, the winners are the Risk V board and the Pico 2 board. Now let's go over to the secure hash 256 different story here different types of calculation here we're using a bit more memory here where where bandwidth is important obviously the calculation important. the nature of the calculations are different so again lower is better and here we can see that the pico 1 and pico 2 boards are just way ahead and the uh, risk 5 board struggles quite a lot and again these are not using the hardware accelerations of the pico or the pico 2 if you're using the hardware acceleration it would be even faster so we can see here again that this is running at 144 megahertz. This one's running at 150 and it's much, much faster. In fact, there's, you know, this is running at 48 megahertz and you can see that these are getting closer to each other. But we'll go through the same experiments of leveling it out. So what happens if it was all running at 48 megahertz? Well, there you can see if it was all running at 48 megahertz, this Risk V board is quite slow compared to all the other ones. So quite different to the... Uh, N Queen's problem there. So what am I thinking from this? My kind of thinking is that maybe at just pure stuff that's inside the CPU, doesn't go outside the CPU at all, doesn't hit the bus, doesn't do anything like that, it seems to be doing very well. As soon as you go outside of just what you can do in the registers and inside the, the core, things get a bit different. So overall here, the Pico 2 is the best board by quite a long way. Again, power consumption is important here. The Risk v board is redeeming itself a bit. We can see here that it's using less power 
than all the other balls. These are at their native speeds now, so 144 megahertz compared to 150 megahertz and so on. Uh, and the Pico uh, one board uses the most power on average during the phase where it's doing the calculations. And what does that mean for total energy to do the whole thing? Well, again, we want to complete all of those uh, calculations for the, the hash uh, 10,000 times. And it's the Arduino and Nano R4 board that uses the most. Again, a much more complicated board with a whole bunch of other features on. The Pico 2 does the best, that M33, uh, absolutely brilliantly there. And uh, next is the Risk 5 board and then the, the Pico. So a, a really a, a mixed bag. It depends on what particular thing it is that interests you uh, it, for the board, you're, for the MCU and the board that you're picking. Okay, so there you have it. So depending on what your exact needs are, there is certainly a, a room for considering this particular RISC-V chip. Now, I said we talk about the ecosystem, and this is the main problem. There is only one way really to program this at the moment, that is using the Arduino ecosystem. And when you go to Adafruit's page, they do state very clearly on several occasions, this is in early development. This is not officially supported. This is what we've been able to put together. And it does work. It took me a lot longer to get it working than it would a normal Arduino board or a P Raspberry Pi Pico board, something that comes from something that's better established. There are several hoops you have to jump through, downloading GitHub repositories and kind of all this kind of stuff. And even in the end, I couldn't get it to work inside, purely inside of the Arduino IDE. I had to do some external steps always to upload the program onto the board once the binary was created by the Arduino uh, setup. But it did work and I was able to run those tests. That particular board from Adafruit comes, for example, with a NeoPixel. I was able to control the NeoPixel uh, in my testing. So all of that works, but it is an outlier in terms of what you can get at the moment. Now, hopefully that will improve just know if you do get one of these, you might only pay one, two dollars for them, but you're going to put in several. I think it took about four hours to get the first program uh, working on the board in the end. So just, you know, there is a learning curve. It's not just plug and play like it would be maybe with other types of boards. OK, love to hear your thoughts. Uh, is the price they are so cheap? Is that just the important thing for you? Or is it the power efficiency? Is it the computing power? Is it the ecosystem? What is it that you look for the most? Do tell me in the comments below. OK, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And also, if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Please do also check out my Patreon page. OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.